They have thousands of photographs. He was a mommy's boy. Countless loving memories. You know, he taught many lessons to us of life. And he made us a strong. Strength they needed almost every hour of every day soon after his birth. Nosad was born as a perfectly normal child. Our firstborn. Firstborn baby. Lots of hopes and, hopes expectations. and expectations. He was good for a week and then our new life started. And their new life was full of pain and harsh realities. He had a seizure first when he was only 10 days old. He seizes all his life. If you can count in hours, we would say 80% of his Five. moments were in seizure. Osad had an undiagnosed neurodegenerative disease. His neurologist informed us that children who are this much sick, they won't survive past four or past five. So we have to feel that one day Osad won't be with us. We were living every day and we were dying every day. That was our life with Osad. Osad would never see, never walk, never talk. We were so much involved with Osad. We were so much attached with us. It was always a one-way communication. We always considered that he was understanding us. We always touched him and talked to him all his life. From the time Osad was born, his parents were told he needed palliative care. It was so hard for us without any family member. And at that time, there was no such place called Roger's House. It would be two years before Roger's House opened its doors. Osad was one of the first children to stay. We cannot imagine how we survived first two years of Osad's life. This is kind of a movie in front of my eyes. Roger's House was embedded with us at every moment. Whenever we needed them, they heard our unsaid words. Staff knew the importance of giving his parents a much-needed break from his around-the-clock care at home, a regimen overwhelming even for his mother, a trained doctor. It's 24 hours a day. We were so overwhelmed. We always got more love than we expected. Late last year, Osad's condition worsened. We choose to come here um, because we knew that we, it, that journey is the hardest, hardest part in, in Osad's journey. So, and we knew that there are, there are people who are with us who can, even if we need any shoulder, we can, we can count on them. So that last 10 days of Osad's life, it was difficult, but it was, it was peaceful. We, we gave him each and every second of our life. He chose to, to, to go in our arms. In both of our arms, actually. He was, he was Right holding. here in this room. We never wanted him to, to go. But, um, but as a parent, we just wanted his suffering to end. And we knew that stop his suffering means either God will cure him or maybe he will take it. Osad's pain ended in January. This family's relationship with Roger's house will never end. We cannot even imagine where we would be if Roger's house wasn't here. I mean, so it's not only a place, it's a family for us and that it be forever. His parents still count on Roger's house for strength in dealing with their grief. And Jawaria, who couldn't save her son, has gone back to school to study neurology her hope to someday prevent another child from suffering like Osad and parents from having to say goodbye. She credits Roger's house for giving her strength to find a positive in the midst of breathless loss. If there is no place like Roger's house, our life would be so much difficult, so much in pain. And Roger's house has given us a sense of like someone is behind you. You are not alone in this in this journey. Now this now said is not with us. We feel that no, we were really lucky. What if he was sad won't be our child? We would be probably a different person. He showed us so many things about life, love, care, and of course death.